soon to hear about SAP on Azure. Uh, while a lot of us like to talk about Azure from time to time, really kind of the, the story is what do we do with it that makes it uh, transformative for our business? Um, so today we'll talk about that. Uh, before we start with that, though, let's dig in on some uh, some good service updates. Or, of course, Azure is always evolving, uh, so I just get to pull out a couple of things that are highlights here. Uh, one is Databox Disk, which is kind of an interesting name. But if you've looked at any of the ways to get data into Azure, uh, a lot of customers come to me and they say, wow, are we going to have to pump so many terabytes of data over the, the express route or over our VPN connection? And until now, we've had a couple of options. One is you can get a full data box, uh, I'll call it an appliance, which is a pretty heavyweight exercise, or you could go buy your own disks. Um, data box disk fits in a nice middle slot there that I think is going to appeal to a lot of folks because it gives you the option of from eight to 40 terabytes uh, of import. And as you see in the picture there, really kind of what you get is a, a solid state SATA drive and an adapter, a USB 3.1 adapter, so you can put them directly into a into a uh, drive caddy if you want to copy the data on there, or you can use USB to load those up. Uh, but essentially, this is a nice compromise to, to get a lot of data moved into Azure pretty quickly. Uh, we ship those disks to you, you load them up, you ship them back, and then uh, you'll find that data on a uh, on a storage account that you can use. And then just another fun note, uh, if you haven't looked at availability zones, I encourage you to do it. It's kind of the next evolution uh, of resiliency within Azure. Uh, we've deployed those now to East US too, so those are available in a nice way to just get a nice uh, uh, SLA tacked on to, to your deployment. So I encourage you to take a look at those and, and all the other Azure updates that we've got. I'll give you a link at the end uh, that you can check out. But with that, let's dig in on today's topic, kind of the, the journey to SAP on Azure. Uh, if there are many SAP folks on the phone, you know that your SAP deployments have probably been long and, and uh, arduous. So the, the thought of deploying to the cloud may be a little bit ominous, but I want to give you some assurances today and show you how Azure can really support doing exactly that. Um, if you're involved with SAP, you know that that uh, SAP is kind of given, I don't want to call it a mandate, but everybody's really been strongly encouraged to make the move to HANA uh, as quickly as possible. Uh, they, there are some support uh, horizons to keep in mind. But what's interesting about that is that a lot of folks today are living in a world where it's still manual. Uh, a lot of things are being kind of propped up or manually managed, uh, long planning cycles because SAP deployments can be very complex, require a lot of hardware, a lot of it very specialized, uh, integration with a lot of different data points. Uh, but fortunately, all of this is going to be supported uh, when you make the move to SAP in Azure. Uh, because we've done some specific product uh, design work, as well as partnering closely with SAP to make sure that we've got the platform uh, that, that is relevant here. So why would you even think about it uh, if you've got your SAP deployment up and running? Well, let's eliminate some of those onerous hardware requirements, some of those long planning cycles, and let's talk about just really the infrastructure, uh, the partnership, and kind of what you get after you make that move that makes it better than just running SAP on premises. Probably the first thing to be aware of is the fact that, yeah, we we do have uh, Azure SKUs that are really designed to work well uh, with the SAP workloads. Uh, you can start down at the low end, say you've got dev test workloads, or you've got a portion of your SAP footprint that you want to extend into the cloud or expand. Uh, we've got the E-Series VMs that you can use. Uh, you can use those for dev and test. You can use those for proof of concepts, and those are available everywhere. You can get a half a terabyte of RAM with those, and then as you prove things out, you can move into what we call our M series. And those fit most implementations because they give us the nice memory footprint uh, that HANA needs. And the best part about it is they've been certified by SAP as well for production use. So you're not going to run into any support issues there. And then some folks have significant uh, footprint uh, in SAP. And you're going to find that sometimes the M series just doesn't cut it. And what we offer there are what we call large instances. And those give us really the, the extreme scale, uh, the performance you need from, from 7 tenths of a terabyte uh, today all the way up to 24 terabytes. But if we dig in a little bit more, we'll find out uh, there's even more uh, in the, on the horizon. So this gives you kind of a nice view of, well, what do we have just for the, for the VMs uh, to run HANA on? And you can see that we've got kind of uh, SKUs segmented for both uh, your transactional workloads as well as your analytical workloads and really a nice cross-section that fits 
really a wide array, a wide array or a wide variety of, of solutions here. So like I said, with the M series, uh, you get a HANA certified uh, VM, but it's on demand. You can spin it up, spin it down, uh, however you need it. Um, and you'll see that the offerings go all the way from eight CPUs all the way up today to 128 CPUs with memory ranging from 219 gigs all the way up to four terabytes uh, if you want to do that in that series. And the nice thing about these is they've been engineered so you get sub millisecond storage rights uh, because we've got write acceleration built into these and bolted onto all of this is our 30 gigabit uh, networking backbone. And so that's uh, if you don't have that deployed on premises today, think about some of the things that you could accomplish just by having just that sheer capability uh, wired in next to your SAP deployment. Then beyond those, uh, as I mentioned, we've got kind of the purpose built infrastructure for HANA. Um, these are the, the really big monsters. Um, uh, we've got uh, NFS storage uh, engineered to be right next door to these guys so that uh, you get the performance that you need. Uh, and you can go all the way up to 24 terabytes with 960 CPU threads uh, on one of these, uh, all the way over there on the right hand side. So uh, a lot of folks think that cloud workloads need to fit into some of the, the very common uh, virtual machine sizes that are available. And hopefully today you see that we've really got uh, bare metal designed purpose built for the, the HANA deployments that you've got to undertake here. The Probably the most important part that I'd leave you with is that while there are a lot of cloud vendors, our partnership with, with SAP has really given us the ability to, to deliver enterprise grade uh, environments for folks. Uh, whether it's from your online, uh, your OLTP workloads, just 24 terabytes um, with a 49s SLA, uh, all the way up to the OLAP workloads that you see there. And the best part about it is one of the benefits you get uh, from deploying onto Azure is the integrated backup and disaster recovery that comes as part of just living on our management plane. The ability to quickly move data around on the backbone and to back up to, to pretty much unlimited storage uh, as you need it. So your, your SAP backup nightmares go away. Now, I've talked a lot about HANA uh, in this case, and of course that's the future for SAP deployments, but a lot of folks have other SAP footprints out there as well. Um, it's a journey we know for a lot of folks. Some people have you know, Windows Server 2008 uh, workloads that are out there today, and Microsoft's announcement of end of life may have you a little bit nervous around that. Maybe if you've got NetWeaver running in that environment. Well, don't think that it's, uh, it's all and only HANA uh, for these conversations. We can also take your SAP NetWeaver workloads or what we call any DB, whether you've got Oracle, DB2, SQL Server, so on, uh, and we'll take those workloads as well. Uh, we give you the, the ability to move those and immediately get TCO savings by right-sizing those. Uh, a lot of folks tend to oversize their, their hardware footprint uh, for SAP because they want to kind of have that headspace. Of course, we all know that one of the benefits of moving to the cloud is the fact that, that you can quickly, uh, elastically scale those things up and down to fit your, fit your workload. Um, so... This is available in 54 regions uh, worldwide, primarily because these use more of our mainstream VM SKUs. Um, so don't discount the fact that, uh, that other parts of your SAP environment can live in the cloud too. And then as I mentioned, there are a lot of, there's a lot of goodness uh, that comes along with moving to the cloud. Uh, the days of racking and stacking and having to secure and manage uh, things becomes a lot easier when you deploy to the cloud. Uh, because we've got all the same Azure native tools that you're used to, uh, to help migrate those machines up, to secure them once they get up there, uh, to monitor them natively uh, on our fabric, and to govern them. Uh, SAP is, for a lot of companies, the crown jewels. That's, that's where all the critical information and the critical workloads sit. So there's a lot of sensitivity, and we know that. So uh, we've got the tools in place to help you uh, both move, uh, manage, and secure all of those workloads. And of course, uh, certifications are important. When you've got a workload like SAP uh, in play, uh, no matter what business you're in, some form of regulation and certification is going to be required. And we constantly work to make sure that we've got those certifications to apply to Azure. And of course, these would accrue to your SAP deployments as well. 
Uh, of those, GDPR is top of mind for everybody. So uh, know that Microsoft is kind of uh, on the forefront of GDPR compliance. Uh, we jumped in early. Uh, we've made sure that all of our employees are trained on GDPR and the requirements that surround it. So know that that, that is part of uh, all the planning and all of the certifications and compliance efforts that, that we uh, bring to bear here. So having looked at the, the uh, infrastructure workload, uh, a lot of customers say, you know, SAP is, is sensitive for us. Uh, we want to know that, that when we need help, we can call somebody who's going to be able to help us. And of course, if you call SAP support, one of the first things they're going to want to make sure is that you've got a certified deployment. Well, we've been an SAP partner for a long time at Microsoft. Uh, not only do we run one of the largest SAP footprints in the world, but uh, we have long worked with them to be able to deploy workloads on our platform as well. So uh, Windows and SQL Server have been have been part of the game for quite a while. Uh, to this end, last year, actually, both of our C uh, CEOs, Bill McDermott from SAP and Satya from Microsoft, uh, came out on stage and, and really renewed our partnership, said, hey, we are in this game together. Uh, we've been working together for 20 years. Now is not the time to ease up. Now is the time to double down. So uh, we're working together and it's not just, hey, uh, we can call you and you can call us, but we've actually placed engineers on each other's campuses uh, to work together on these things. Uh, I was actually on vacation and ran into a guy from uh, SAP and his office was on the Redmond campus. So he, he's actually hands on involved uh, in these deployments. So that's that's good assurance uh, for folks that are concerned about making this move. And as I mentioned, we've got a giant footprint ourselves. Uh, this kind of gives you a, a high level overview of it. Uh, if you're an SAP architect, a lot of this should look very familiar to you and you should also shake your head and say, wow, they've got uh, kind of one or two of everything uh, at Microsoft. Uh, yeah, we've got a, a, a giant footprint uh, to give you some details around the statistics in play there. Um, We've got over 50 terabytes uh, of data uh, in play in our SAP deployment. Uh, just about 600 servers uh, that we're working with. Um, and what's interesting is I've been with Microsoft 20 years and we've always known that SAP is, is there somewhere, but we've got a lot of what we call indirect or adjacent access to SAP. So I've got web-based tools that reach into SAP, but don't necessarily, uh, I don't use SAP GUI. I don't use any of the, the SAP tools directly. We actually have a very limited number of users who do that. But it's important to know that the, the 100 plus thousand employees of Microsoft are, are hitting our SAP infrastructure on a constant basis every day. And the nice part about that is even in our move to Azure uh, with SAP, uh, you know, we're still maintaining uh, four nines and an eight uh, of raw uptime uh, for that environment. But by moving to Azure, the nice thing is, is we've seen a, about a 7% reduction in tickets from our users just a lot of those were performance or response time based, and we've gotten our response time down below half a second, which is pretty phenomenal uh, considering what we used to see. It used to kind of be uh, an hourglass exercise, so it's, uh, it's exciting. And the nice thing about that is a lot of this move for us, uh, we were able to use the M series with SQL Server uh, rather than even having to go with the large instances. So uh, it's, uh, it's a testament to, to what's possible uh, in this world. Um, anybody who's got an SAP deployment today likely didn't do it on their own. They probably did so with a partner and they probably still have a partner involved with them and we work closely with them as well. Uh, we're not just tied in with SAP, but we're also tied in with these folks that can help you both assess your environment uh, as well as prepare it for the move. And finally to take that move and continue your, your operations uh, in the cloud. Uh, hopefully if you've got a partner involved in one of your projects today, you see them on this list. If not, stay tuned. Uh, because we've got a lot of folks who remain interested uh, in diving into this space with us. So finally, uh, hopefully now you feel confident that we've got the kind of the building blocks or the necessary components uh, to deploy SAP into your environment. And you can see that we can do it in a secure way, but okay, why bother? Other than cost savings, you know, how are we going to transform the business or what capabilities are we going to gain uh, on top of this? Well, probably the biggest, and I tell customers this all the time, uh, going back to that data box disk that I talked about, is there is just sheer goodness from moving your data to the Azure backbone. Because then, once you've got it on a 30 gigabit backbone with all these services kind of swarming around it, you gain new capabilities and new things that you can do with your data. 
uh, in, in the old world, you probably had to copy the data across the network to be able to gain access to it or to use it in a reporting or an analytics or an AI scenario. Well, now you can move it into Azure and you're a heartbeat away from all of these other capabilities that we've got built in. So you can take your non SAP data sources or your SAP data sources and move them into Azure and then continue to ingest that data to, to gather that data and accumulate it into a data lake or into SAP natively. And the beauty of that is we've really got no limits to what you can store. Uh, you don't have to get into storage forecast. You don't have to get into buying spindles or buying disks uh, to, to keep your SAN uh, at capacity. You can continue to grow and curate that data uh, as you accumulate it uh, in Azure. Well, then once you've got that done, uh, you can bring tools to bear like Hadoop, Spark, HD Insight from us um, to number one, analyze that data in flight, but number two, what can we do? What can we go back and learn from our data from the years past? Uh, the big reason a lot of these SAP footprints are so large is that folks just know that having this historical data beyond legal requirements is good business intelligence. We just haven't had the capability uh, or even the, the skill set in some cases to deploy the tools that we need to, to get this analysis. Well, these are already uh, in Azure. You can turn those on, turn them off as you need to, but quickly then use that data and get new value out of that data. And then important, make it available to your people, whether it's through Power BI or uh, other analytics tools that you like to use in your environment, all the way down to mobile apps or feed that data back in. Uh, one of the best use cases that I know is, you know, Salesforce automation is no longer just, hey, let's log our customers and let's log our phone calls but let's make our sellers smarter about what we're doing so we can use data from things like SAP or adjacent data sources to inform the sales cycle or to inform the service cycle or to help po folks in support get a better uh, 360 degree view of their customer. So all of these things become more possible once we've got that data uh, in the cloud. So hopefully you've seen today that the, the deep partnership that we've got with SAP over 20 years um, is critical. Not only do we have a large footprint ourselves at Microsoft, but SAP themselves, they're moving into Azure as well, uh, taking 17 of their critical the best public cloud offering uh, that's available today for SAP uh, on, on the cloud. And really what's behind that is the fact that we've we've enterprise engineered that. We've built it to be an enterprise grade uh, platform for SAP. I uh, encourage everybody to, to act now. If you haven't started doing the analysis, reach out to folks uh, and, and get, get more information. Uh, we can help. We've got partners who are ready to help and help you do the analysis to look at your footprint, talk about how ready you are to make a move or how hard it would be for you to make the move or what changes need to happen. But then start getting this value is make that move and start making the change because that that uh, HANA requirement is just around the corner. And while I'm mentioning it, um, a lot of folks may know this, but some may not. Just by the sheer fact of moving your SQL and your your Windows workloads, you get extended support as well. We've got some uh, end of support, end of life horizons out there for Windows and SQL. And if those are on your mind, um, be aware of the, the benefits that you get of moving those to Azure as well, because we're extending support for some of those workloads that are running in Azure. Uh, beyond that, I encourage you to take a look at the resources here. Uh, if you get the slide deck, uh, these links to the Azure homepage, the blog and the updates, that's really the best way to keep up with what's going on in Azure, what's shipped, what's new. And then there's a link, although if you go to Azure, you'll see that we call it a hero solution, uh, the SAP on Azure solution. We have extensive documentation that gives you a reference architecture, shows you the steps and the analysis that you need to go through before you start moving this workload and really uh, more information in depth about kind of what we went over today uh, to give you an idea of what moving SAP to Azure would look like for you. So I would thank everybody for taking the time today and uh, we can open it up for comments or Q&A. Uh, so hey Andy, uh, yeah. th there, were, there were a few questions in the chat window. We tried to answer that. So one of them is like, uh, when are we going to have availability zones in South Central region? Um, uh, I can look. I don't. I don't know offhand. Uh, we can look at the uh, at the roadmap. I think Paul answered that uh, question. Okay. So, 
possible. Other than that, anybody else has any other questions on SAP on Azure? Hey, uh, this is Suresh here. I uh, just have a quick question. Um, do we have um, like a insights about, uh, let's say, if you're working an account, whether the customer has um, SAP? I mean, rather than directly asking them, uh, because uh, for example, uh, the Azure um, development uh, community has a Power BI report which kind of lists all the competing technologies like Oracle and all those things. But do we have um, anything like that? To help to I, I don't know of anything broadly. Um, I know in South Central, we just through a partnership with our SAP account team, they were able to share with us kind of what customers had a footprint. They weren't able to tell us, you know, specifically what workloads are running, but depending on where you're based, you may be able to reach out to, to your SAP peers and they'll be able to give you that information. Yep. Thank you, Andy. You bet. So uh, perfect. I, I don't think so. We have any other questions. Uh, well, let's give uh, a last round and ask if anybody else has any other questions. Otherwise, we can uh, just uh, you know take some time off. Give everybody an early start for the week. Yeah. Hey, uh, I have one quick question. Um, uh, Azure Kubernetes Service AKS. Uh, is there any timeline uh, uh, to enable in South Central region? Uh, last year we were, we were promised. Uh, it will be available from February end, uh, but is there any uh, definitive answer? I think we just had that question come up yeah. in the internal chat, but I don't remember the answer. Yeah, I heard it's uh, Q1 of 2019, but uh, like like I said, these are just the uh, just the roadmap dates, uh, and this might right. change. So don't quote me on that. Oh, thanks. I understand. Yeah. All right. One one last question. Um, I, I think it's really impressive that um, you can put this Power BI, I mean the, the you know, SAP HANA on onto the um, our backbone network. And so I'm just wondering if there's any templates or any use cases that you've seen to leverage Power BI to ingest things into Power BI to provide analytics that might be in um, obviously SAP HANA and display anything with in, in Power BI. Yeah, we actually had a workshop here in. Uh in South Central uh, around doing that. Um, your internal? Yeah, yeah, this yeah. is Russ SDSA. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, ping me ping me direct and okay. uh, and I'll point you toward that. Great, thank you. Yep. Okay, all right folks, uh, thank you so much for joining the call and have a wonderful weekend. Thanks guys, appreciate the time. Thanks Andy.